uh, evidence that has come on record clearly establishes so far one thing that she now was definitely alive well after the alleged date of her disappearance when i went into prison because peter's family was my only family right uh, my parents were aging and everybody had carried on with their own lives children were grown up so uh, that was my only family and i felt and they abandoned me they just left me in prison in april 2012 sheena bora a mumbai based executive went missing 3 years later in august 2015 the mumbai police arrested indrani mukherjee her mother peter mukherjee uh, her stepfather and indrani's then husband and their driver for allegedly uh, kidnapping and then murdering sheena what followed was one of the most sensational murder trials to have hit our headlines in a long long time today we have with us indrani mukherjee um, a former media baron founder of inx media and accused in the sheena bora murder case and now also an author who's written uh, this book called unbroken so um indrani thank you so much for joining us and i'll dive straight into it uh, on the cover the book says it's indrani mukherjee's untold story so uh, what's untold here because you know a lot has been written about this case a lot has been said so are there any grand facts of the matter that we don't know about uh have you read the book as yet i managed to speed read yes <laughs> yes okay so the untold story is of course uh decimating all the rumors that were spread with absolutely no ratification no basis you know there were a lot of things that were said about me the moment i stepped into prison you know people there was a a frenzy all over of course it was a sensational news for everybody and people who knew me and did not know me said a lot of things and that started of course from the family members from some of the family members which was really sad but then i think it was important that uh, you know ratified facts are put out so which was a reason i decided to write i had a lot of time in hand uh, while i was in prison and i decided that i should put all my kind of all the facts together and uh, write something this book is essentially my voice so everyone forgot that i had a voice too i have a voice so it was the right moment i was waiting for and now it's out so it's your your answer to a lot of things which were said when you were in prison uh, so in the book also you know there there are parts where you've spoken of some sort of a media trial that happened your people who were, who you worked with and you know people who you knew or who didn't know you they said certain things so uh, tell us about that i mean what how did you feel what kind of things were you hearing when you were in prison who was saying what were you particular really upset with some people saying certain things um actually uh, initially i was upset initially but i was basically dealing uh, with the grief of all that happened to me um, this part of it is later this is a very small thing that happened people talking and all that that's all rubbish you know so what really uh, was um, very very distressful for me because initially when i went in uh and there was this whole thing of that sheena is dead and she is no longer there she is no more that was what so i was dealing with the grief of the loss of a child that was what was kind of very very a painful process for me till the charge sheet came in and i read the charge sheet and over a period of time once i started seeing all the loopholes particularly in the forensics and then it came to messages and communication and then the realization dawned that you know since the forensics are very kind of um, manipulated and which later was proved established in court it was manipulated but at that stage 
till the doctors and the forensic experts came and deposed. We didn't know that, right? But there was a very clear indication that it was all manipulated. Uh, and then, of course, one found out about the uh, DFSL uh, endorsed messages uh, in between Rahul Mukherjee and Sheena, which took place even like I think five, six months later. And it's again a forensic report. It's not something that I am saying. So it, it was retrieved from his phone. So all these things later kind of gave me a sense of uh, relief because I realized that uh, I was relieved for two reasons, I'll tell you. Uh, one is that uh, I realized that Sheena was alive for a long time after that. So there is a possibility that she is still alive. That was one realization. The second thing that came to my mind, which was also a relief, was that I could, with all what that has come on record or what has what I had in hand, it was going to be uh, very, very easy for me to prove my innocence legally. That was what gave me a sense of relief. You know, uh, actually, that is the question I was coming to, which yeah. you partly addressed. Over the years, you've maintained that Sheena is alive. Uh, no, I have not maintained, ever. So, let me correct you on that, okay? So, you're, uh, but you just said that, uh, okay, there's a possibility of Sheena being alive uh, yeah. or, so for there a long is, time. So, let me just correct you on this. Uh, evidence that has come on record clearly establishes so far one thing that Sheena was definitely alive well after the alleged date of her disappearance or murder or whatever. That has got established in court. But I again want to correct this because I've seen headlines, oh, Indrani claims Sheena is alive. I have never claimed Sheena is alive. I have not met her for several years, so I cannot say that. But I do hope she is alive and intuitively I feel she is alive. That is the thing. It's just more of that. Right. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, I read the book. Uh, you start from the year 2015, uh, the year you were arrested and there's a very interesting observation you made that when the cops first knocked at your door, you felt like you were being kidnapped. Uh, when uh, this was actually, I had gone for some charity work very close to my house in a uh, orphanage called Anand Ashram. And so when I had stepped out of Anand Ashram, suddenly I was surrounded by, at that time I didn't know they were cops because they were in uh, civil clothes, right? So, uh, and that was the time when suddenly kind of they were pushing me in and this thing, I thought I was kidnapped. Tell us about what happened after that, a few days or a few weeks, How? what was it like, how chaotic it was? It must have been really chaotic. I was in a state of shock. There was no thing of chaos. I was in a state of shock because it was like, why me? Why me? What is it that I have done or not done to deserve this? And then when obviously I heard, see initially for me also, I believed that Sheena could be no more, right? So it was you're dealing with the grief on one side and then the accusation. So there are two, uh, you know, huge uh, emotional kind of issues that I was dealing with at that point in time. And uh, I also like uh, when I went into prison because Peter's family was my only family, right? Uh, my parents were aging and everybody had carried on with their own lives. Children were grown up. So uh, that was my only family and I felt and they abandoned me. They just left me in prison with no money, no this thing. But when I came out, I realized that there are or even during that period, I met a lot of good people. So when I came out of prison, I made it a point which anybody knew who I met that listen before you make you know even get any closer to me this is my background so I am I have spent six and a half years in prison so there is a lot for me I'm in that healing process I'm still healing 
you want to be my friend, great. You don't want to be my friend, it's your loss. You made a reference to your relationship with your parents. You said, uh, you know, you moved out of home at a very early age. You've also dedicated a, you know, a full chapter, large a large part of the book to that part of your life. Uh, you know, uh, for our viewers, of course, I'd just like to mention that you've also accused your father of sexual harassment. So uh, I'm not accused, it's happened and it's, it was already out. It came out basically when I was in prison. So when we talk about that, if you could elaborate a little. Uh, it's all in the book. I really don't fancy talking about it. It's a difficult uh, thing to talk about, you know, it's so uh, read the right. book. You've read the book, so you know everything. But do you think that that also, uh, you know, uh, the, the troubled relationship that also translated somewhere into your relationships with your own children? No, not really. I had a perfectly fine relationship with Sheena. I had a very good relationship with Sheena. Despite all the rumours people like to spread, I had a much closer relationship with Sheena uh, than I have even today with my younger daughter Vidhi. You know, because uh, because perhaps because the age gap in between me and Sheena was very less. You know, we were like more like, uh, you know, we became very, very close during the period when she was in Bombay. And till, of course, uh, Rahul walked in and things started changing. And then her focus obviously shifted to Rahul because that happens as people... Uh, you know, move into other relationships, you know, you have lesser time with your parents. That's like when you get married, you're, you spend more time with your husband and then when kids come in, you start spending more, your time gets split with your children. So it's a natural process. But um, I, at no stage and no point anywhere, neither has Sheena ever told me or Sheena, I, I don't think Sheena has told anybody in fact that is where it has come out from a lot of messages uh, in fact that we saw in court where Sheena is actually uh, there is a message from Sheena to Rahul saying that you know I have a perfectly fine relationship uh, and uh, with uh, my mother and I am having a lot of fun with Indrani so I think you should stay out of it about your relationship with Sheena, of course, because that's something which is of great curiosity to a lot of people. A lot has already been written about it. And like you just mm -hmm. said that, uh, you know, what your, your version is quite contrary to what has already been written about it. My version is exactly the evidence that has been put in court. So everything that I've said in my book is ratified, which is why I have put footnotes in my footnotes. I've put links to everything. So that nobody can, you know, a lot of people talked a lot of fluff, you know, the moment I was in prison. So everything that I'm saying today is ratified. Uh, why have you written this book, if you were to explain to us in some brevity about that? Yeah. Uh, this book is a catharsis. So I needed to finally uh, just bring everything out in the open. It was very important for me. And I just needed uh, from here on, and this is what I believe in, that I think people need to know me completely, absolutely in the bare and the raw to be able to have any form of relationship with me, whether it's as an acquaintance or a friend or a companion.